Well then, Bunny. Yes. This week on the Pope on Film podcast, we are continuing with our month-long movement that uh, we are calling the November Palette Cleanser. For the entire month of October, we watched some of our most challenging films we have ever seen. Yes. They were artistic. They were boundary-pushing. They were challenging. And no one knew of the film's existences. <laughs> This is true. And and for whatever reason, I've been really self-conscious about getting people to listen to the show. And and like in my mind, we have like a thousand five hundred fans that are like demanding things like 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 in my head. I have these invisible, vaguely non-existent fans of the Pope on film that I feel that I need to placate. It's really weird. I've somehow got it in my system that we (laughs) have to watch these big popular movies in order to get more clicks and more views and whatever, which is ridiculous. Like, I know it's ridiculous. It's our show and we can watch whatever the fuck we want to. And I know that. Uh But I've gotten it in my head that the month of November just has to be filled with big and new and important big budget crap to counter the unknown art films of last month. But for whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, we are continuing the November palette cleanser with the number one movie in America, nay the world. Yes. Except for Mexico, where Disney Pixar's Coco has been out for a month and is making fucking bank. Really? Yeah, Disney Pixar's new film Coco has been out for a month. It was the first country. The first country that got Disney Pixar's new film was Mexico. It's been out for a month. It is already the highest grossing animated film in Mexico history. Really? That yeah, is, pe- that's good. People are going nuts for it. I'm just worried about the film being rolled out here. What with the anti-immigrant feelings that are... <sighs> washing over america i'm worried that his new film which is all about mexican heritage like it, like ooh, like okay i'm just worried there's going to be protests and shit and and like i'm hoping it does good here yeah but i'm not expecting any freaking miracles i i wouldn't yeah not yes these this days, week. anyway yeah This week, we are discussing Marvel's latest film, the 2017 blockbuster, Thor Ragnarok. Yes. So let's start off the discussion of Thor Ragnarok with another in-depth look at B-movie. Okay, why why do we have to do that? Because every other Thursday, I take my daughter, Isabella, to therapy. Uh So she has an hour-long therapy session, and I really love taking her to therapy because that means I will be sitting in a waiting room for like an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes with nothing else to do but work on the freaking podcast. Uh Uh-huh. And I get so much work done, so much writing done in the time that I'm sitting there on the comfy couch in the waiting room of my daughter's therapy. It's like a, it's like a 25 minute drive too. It's a a little bit out of the way, but it allows Bella and I to spend some time together and talk and yada, yada, yada. It's something I really look forward to, but we, we like to gamble on our way to therapy because the, the, the the waiting room there's a tv in there and Uh the tv they are constantly playing kids movies family friendly movies kids movies most of the time it's the same sort of thing like oh it's horton here's the who again Uh uh-huh or it happened to jane that only happened once and it happened to natasha and i am so I have seen so many Disney animated films at this uh, therapist office that I'm starting to think Natasha just uh, imagined that entire film. (laughs) It's a possibility. Somehow she just willed it into existence. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think what I'm saying is I don't think Doris Day exists. 
Uh, that could be a white conspiracy theory. Well, that's a good point. Doris Day never existed. Yeah. So, so I was, I was betting this, this, this morning, like, okay, so what do you think they're going to be playing? And Bella's like, I think, I think, uh, not a Disney movie this week. I think uh, the first Madagascar. I'm like, ooh, that's a good bet. I'm going with either um, Ratatouille or Finding Nemo. That's what I'm going with. Should I go with Horton Hears the Who? They've been watching that a lot. No, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with either Finding Nemo or uh, Finding Nemo or what did I say? Ratatouille. Yeah. Say like Rat. But but then they uh, the therapist shocked the world, and by the world I mean Bella and I on the couch. By for the first time ever, they were showing B movie. Okay, that's they had never cruel and unusual. Yeah, and it, it and it's it was it was weird that I had to see B movie again. <laughs> yeah. That was weird, and it's it, it's it's funny because for. On and off throughout the rest of the day, I've been saying, You're gonna be a star! <laughs> I've been saying that a lot. And I've been saying, like, I love you, Bella. I love you. I love you so much, Bella. <laughs> or should I say, Mr. Gordon M. Sumner? <laughs> Bella's just you- upset because... Bella's just upset because she didn't get on the Krellman. Yeah. She really wanted to get on the Krellman. <laughs> that's the thing that that's the thing that makes that makes sure that they get that little bit of honey that's still clinging to the pot. It saves the millions. I still cannot believe that B movie exists. Watching it again. Like, it, it, like I'm 100% convinced that, like, Jerry Seinfeld, you've never done anything for kids. We think you'd be great to make a kids movie. So what do you, <laughs> what's, your, what's your idea for this kids movie, Mr. Man, who's never done anything for children? Well, I want to uh, remake The Graduate for kids. <laughs> and then the studio is like, well, we should say no, but you're Jerry Seinfeld. Here's a hundred million dollars. Have fun remaking the graduate for children. Mm-hmm. Graduate babies is basically graduate what the movie babies. Yeah. And it's weird. And but knowing that, and then re-watching the film today at the therapist's office, like one of the first lines of the film, uh, uh Barry B. Benson comes down the stairs, and the dad sees him and he goes. There's the graduate. Oh. Like, Jesus, way to telegraph it. You literally. <laughs> most of the time, when someone's parodying something, you usually don't have one character say, man, this is really Alfred Hitchcock's psycho. <laughs> you just find ways to incorporate it. So, really weird. Really yes. weird. It's like if it's like if like Sharknado Five had a line. Wow! Now you're Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. <laughs> like Jesus, there's you know hitting the nail on the head, and then there's just using a fucking nail gun, a sledgehammer. Yes. Yeah. Which is which is uh, oh well, which is why I heard. Uh, I just saw Chappie the other night. It's on Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah the 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 British robot movie, the South African, South African yeah. robot movie. Uh, that I heard it's horrible. And and eh, it wasn't horrible. It was far from fucking great though. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. it was serviceable. You know, it was it was serviceable enough. Um. But that's what I heard about the previous, because this is the guy who did District 9, which was a huge hit. Yeah. A huge surprise hit. And then he did Elysium, 
which I heard is very much like B movie in regard to being way on the nose. Yeah. You know, and just kind of beating you over the head with what the message is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, uh, sorry that I went back to B movie. It, it, it hurts. I know, I know it does. But while we're going back, let's go back a few months. June 2017, episode 131 of The Big Shoe, What We Do in Shadows. Yes. Great, great, great fucking movie. Definitely in my top ten of, like, all-time bestests. Yes. Fucking Kevin, fucking Kevin Spacey. Like, I just keep saying Space. to myself, yeah, no, because I'm thinking like my all of my all time favorite movies. And then I think, oh, well, you know what? What movie might be in there now? Baby Driver. That was a great movie. Man, Kevin Spacey was great. And God damn it, Kevin Spacey. Yeah. yeah. God damn it, Kevin Spacey. Yeah. So then I was at work and, and, and I'm listening to my work playlist. And then hit, hit, that song comes on. Uh, was he slow? And I'm like, ah, oh, this feels weird now. Yeah. You've infiltrated my work music playlist. Like, way to, way to ruin everything, Kevin Spacey. I'm the real victim here, is what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I'm the one being hurt by this. And, and I completely agree. I feel your pain. Thank you. So, here, take it to Mommy. Yeah, take it to mommy. Mommy. So What We Do in Shadows was the brainchild of New Zealand director Taiki Kiki Wawaka Waka. Yes. Rikishi. Or some, yeah. Rikishi Waka Waka. Or something to that effect. Yes. What we what we do in the shadows an entirely ad libbed vampire horror comedy and it's fucking hilarious. Uh, this this Taiki Waka Wakanda is definitely a director you want to watch. In fact, we did episode 131 for the sole purpose of discussing how awesome Thor Ragnarok is going to be. Yes. That was the only reason that we watched the film is, is because I wanted to hype up Thor Ragnarok. It, it deserved the hyping up. Yeah. It's a great fucking movie. So cut to... The Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's uh, fairly new, but it's doing good. They decide in 2011 to make Thor. It's their fourth Marvel movie. It, it goes Iron Man, the Hulk that they quickly ignored, Iron Man 2, and then Thor. Yes. The Hulk, Hulk movie is quickly uh, ignored in the world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you want to know why, yeah. all you have to if you want to know why that Hulk movie was quickly ignored, all you have to do is uh, watch the movie Birdland. Birdland. Yes, because everyone in Birdland is playing a. V fictionalized version of themselves. Okay. So Edward Norton took this part because it was written for him so that he can play a person who is notoriously impossible to work with. <laughs> and he's like, oh, so this part was written for me so that I can play someone who's hard to work with. Oh, gee, this will be a stretch for me, Edward Norton. Yeah. So a lot of the like his attitude and the way he just uh, kind of takes over the play and tries to turn it into something different like it that's Edward Norton. He just has a habit of trying to take over projects and redo them and be a diva and be an asshole and be a uh, dick to everyone. I and, I I have heard that about Edward Norton before. Yeah. Yes. So so basically, 
Edward Norton makes this Hulk movie and Marvel has such a horrible time working with Edward Norton that by the time the Hulk movie comes out, Marvel is like, oh, please go see this Hulk movie. I think it's going to be great. We worked really hard on it. And FYI, we've already fired Edward Norton and he'll never be the Hulk again. <laughs> go yeah. see this movie, but just be aware you will never again see Edward Norton in a Marvel movie. And so, and did they ever just fucking upgrade? You know, hell yeah. Mark Ruffalo is so good. Yes, he is. You know, he's just a tremendous actor and a good human being. Yes, I was just about to say that. Yeah. So of course, like Edward Norton, like in the lead up to the Hulk movie, he literally comes around and says, "Oh yes, well." uh, uh, the script is amazing. I I wrote it. <laughs> and Marvel's like, no, you didn't write it. And he's like, yes, but I helped write it. I helped write the film. I helped direct it. I I, I, I really worked hard to make this a, 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 not just a comic book movie, but a good film about um, man yeah. and society. And Marvel's like, oh, Jesus Christ, this fucking guy. He's pitching it. Yeah. So they quickly fired him, and so now that's the the one Marvel Cinematic Universe movie that they're like, "Hey, let's just sweep this under the rug." But if well, you want to know, that's two Hulk movies under the rug. <laughs> no. But the first Hulk movie wasn't done by Marvel. The Ang Lee Hulk movie wasn't done that by was Marvel. So bad, especially I, especially from Ang fucking Lee. You know, it it was they had they literally they, this is the one thing that killed me and, and, and made me just say, you know what? Fuck this movie. Not the, the dogs. Everybody likes to bring up him fighting. the Yeah, dogs. everybody loves to bring up the dogs. Everybody brings up the dogs. Yeah, no, no, it, it wasn't the dogs. They had a flashback. Within a fucking flashback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He flashed back to this point where he was in college and he was sitting under a tree. I don't know why. And then he flashed back from the tree. Yeah. Like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? Flashback exception. Yes. The thing that pissed me off about Ang Lee's The Hulk is that Ang Lee is such an artist that he's like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your crappy comic book and turn it into a, a, a touching art film about the sins of the father being brought down to the sins. Now they're the sins of the son and the son is battling the father and the father is battling the, the son. I'm going to take this comic book movie and turn it into a touching family drama. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, With oh, Nick fuck you. fucking Nolte. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. That's that's so Ang Lee that, okay, I'm going to take your crappy movie, your crappy comic book, and turn it into a beautiful art film. Nick Nolte, <laughs> Nick Nolte is exactly like Gary Busey if Gary Busey could act. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh so Iron Man, the Hulk they quickly ignored, Iron Man 2, then Thor. Originally, Thor was owned by Sony Pictures. And for okay. a while Yeah, and for a while I, I, they just always owned the rights to it. It's just the rights were expiring. So they, for a while, they were trying to get people and like Sam Raimi wanted to do like a, a Thor movie for Sony that would be real trippy because of course it's Sam Raimi. So Sam Raimi is automatically thinking, oh yeah, let's make a trippy film. Really trippy because those comics were trippy. This is going to be a trippy film. It's going to be real yeah. trippy. But Sony was like, oh yeah, no, no one can do anything with Thor. Okay. So well, uh, so I, I, I did not look forward. Marvel. I did not look forward to a Thor movie. 
I looked forward to a Thor movie. I looked forward to the first Thor film. I thought he was going to look ridiculous. Yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. So, it, and just to be clear, Thor was owned by Sony, so never say never to Avengers versus X-Men. That would be I got, cool. I still have still have fingers crossed for Avengers versus X-Men. That could happen. So the first Thor was a hit, but it definitely wasn't a massive success. It wasn't an Iron Man. It wasn't an Iron Man 2. It wasn't an Iron Man 3. It no. made, and I was kind of surprised by this, the first Thor film in its entire run in America, it made $181 million. That's and that's <laughs> not so good. What would they budget it at? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But it it also made like 268 million in the foreign markets, but still like that's it, it, the Thor Ragnarok made close to the the entire US box office for the first Thor. They got close to making that in fucking week 1 of Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. <sighs> Just FYI, this this Thor movie is freaking huge. But it, for a it was it was that, nice to see his umbrella. Although wasn't it a cane actually? Like it was like a cane or a walking stick. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, for a character that not too many people really knew, like 181 million in the U.S., that's a fairly decent hit. So two years later, they do Thor Two: Electric Boogaloo, which I remember hardly anything from and i've seen that movie like seven or eight times i did not watch that one it it, it's okay it's pretty good but it's like eh. It, it did it it got okay reviews but not great reviews it did a bit better than the first one it made 206 million in the u.s and and much bigger in the foreign markets it's good but I don't think people were clamoring for more Thor. So they, they put Thor on the back burner. Like, okay, we're done with Thor for a while. We don't know what we're doing. We're just, we're just going we're just to say we're done with it for a while. I don't know what you want. You can't, do you want my podcast notes? You can't have them because I'm doing my podcast. No, you can't have my podcast notes. You, where are your notes? You had my notes. Where, where's the clipboard? Go find it. I bet mommy has it. I bet she's hiding it in her ample bosom. <laughs> her bosom. I'm talking about mommy's boobies. Mm-hmm. Oh, boobies. You should go check mommy's boobies. Mm-hmm. Booby. Going to check mommy's booby. Good. It's a good idea. The third film doesn't appear for four four whole years Uh because Marvel wasn't sure what to do with Thor. They were just like, I don't know where we we can go with this, what we can do with this. So they they had an idea. and Their idea was, what if we do Planet Thor? That was their idea. Okay. So they so they they get an idea from a 2006 comic book storyline that I loved and that my wife loved called Planet Hulk. Yes. And I, I love have, this. I have heard of Planet Hulk. Yeah, I, I've read it a bajillion times. It really it's really, really good. And uh, here's a bit of uh, extra credit for you guys. Uh, for anyone out there listening who's a big fan of Thor Ragnarok on Hulu, they have the 2010 animated directed DVD movie of Planet Hulk. Really? Yeah, yeah. They made a movie. It was directed DVD. It's pretty damn good. It, 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 they got the story of Planet Hulk, and they just they turn it into a movie. They take out the Silver Surfer, who has a small part in Planet Hulk, and they put Beta Ray Bill in it, in its, uh-huh. place, okay. its place, which I liked. And then it's basically exactly the Planet Hulk comic book storyline, except it ends on a, on a positive note. Planet Hulk actually is a seriously depressing ending that this animated version does a good job of not showing. But yeah, there, there's an animated version of Planet Hulk out there, and it's interesting to see just how much of Thor Ragnarok did come from Planet Hulk. 
So when well, this it idea- certainly looks like it came from Planet Hulk with oh, with yeah. the Hulk in the armor, and no, he doesn't want to leave. All that kind of stuff. Um, he's a hero here. What? Because he's a hero on this planet. Yeah. So he doesn't want to go back to go to the place where everyone hates him. Yeah. And why would you? Yeah. So with that in mind, they start shopping for a director who would bring something different to the table. And boom, Tic Tac's Wakanda Walker. (laughs) Tahiti Watusi, legendary New Zealand director, Toledo Winkletits. Winkle Mm -hmm. Winkle Titties. Toledo Wink Titties. Yes. So so one of the things that I really liked about like they had a list of like five or six different directors who did different type of films who could get like this dusty old Thor series and do something really different with it. That's what they wanted. They wanted something different. So uh, Tahiki Wawaka Waka decides to make a sizzle reel and he just gets these different action films and these different comedies and he cuts them together in, in a way where it's like f- four, three or four minutes of what he wants to do with his uh, Thor movie. Uh-huh. And the Marvel people, the Marvel people are just like, hey, okay, we don't like sizzle reels. What you're doing, Tahiti Watusi, we actually don't like that because it, it usually doesn't end up good. And he's like, oh, please give me a chance. I don't know how to do a New Zealand accent, so I'm just doing British. <laughs> oh, please, no. please give us a shot. So he does this sizzle reel. He shows it to the Marvel people and the entire sizzle reel. He hasn't even been hired yet, but he puts over his sizzle reel that fucking Led Zeppelin song. Nice. That, that just, that, that was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that's exactly what we needed there. And why didn't anybody think about that before? Yeah. It's perfect. Mm Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that that um, even before he was hired, he had that in his mind. Yeah. You know? So I, I love this film. What it feels like to me is, uh, oh, yeah, we've got these huge films coming up. Uh, we Marvel people have a whole slate of films lined up. They're going to be huge. We've got uh, Avengers, Avengers 2. Then we're going to be working on Avengers 3 and 4 at the same time. Finishing off Iron Man with Iron Man 3. We've got these huge, massive movies. Thor, going to be a blockbuster hit. We've got some real, huge, amazing films coming up. Oh, and Guardians of the Galaxy. But I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. That's probably not going to be a big deal for us. (laughs) Oh, but let me tell you, the entire cinematic universe is going to be thrown on its ass when they see the amazing work we're doing in Doctor Strange. Again, don't worry about Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, you went there. Don't worry about Guardians of the Galaxy. That's not going to be that big of a hit. So then it was such a hit that there's a part of me that feels that Guardians of the Galaxy was so huge that the Marvel people just said, hey, Tahiki, we'll walk a walk up. You you see Thor? Guardians the shit out of it. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, this Guardians movie was really popular. Apparently, uh, people want these Marvel movies to be fun. Yeah, yeah so it, it's really like blowing our minds because if, if there's one thing that we haven't been doing with Thor, it's, it's, it's been making them fun. Yes. They're uh, 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 epic dramas. Kenneth Branagh. Yeah, he always hears yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, let's just get, let's just Guardians up Thor. Fuck it. And then there you go. That, that's what they did with this film. And it's all the better for it. I, I, I totally agree. There are some wonderful things in this movie that I absolutely love. I love the shake weight. This, this shake weight just for a second. What the hell? I just I just love the fact that like here's Idris Elba and he's the guardian and the gatekeeper of 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 this this pathway to a bunch of different realms, a bunch of different worlds. But then you get you fire that guy 
and put some shitty guy in. And of course he's going to use it to go all over the place. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, check out my stuff. (laughs) This is called a motorcycle. Check out these, these guys here. They're called AK 47s. And this is called a shake weight. (laughs) They're all, Ooh, also, I was not expecting to see Matt Damon in this motherfucker. Yes. And who was playing Thor there? I wasn't quite picking that up. Oh, it's somebody. It's somebody. I don't remember who. I don't remember who. I'd have to Instagram it. All I know is that uh, uh, Sam Neill was up in there, too. Sam Neill? Yeah. 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 I he hasn't believe- in a while. No, he has not. And uh, uh, Doctor Strange and the Umbrella. I loved that. Doctor Strange was not in this movie. I am sorry. I reject that. Why do you reject that? Because it's just it's just a slightly longer version of of the end credit of Doctor Strange. It was the same fucking bit. Yeah, but one thing that I did like was at the end of that where uh, Thor's about to go back into the, the the go to the portal to find it to find Odin. Yeah, and Doctor Strange goes, "Don't forget your umbrella." So Thor does his thing where he just puts his hand out, waiting for the his hammer to come to him. But the hammer's in a different part of the house, so you just keep hearing all of this breaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. (laughs) Really sorry. And then it's like, oh, yes, let's not forget your brother. And he just falls out of this guy. I have been falling for a half hour. (laughs) Yes. And And that was something else that I really kind of enjoyed, too. They they really got the the Loki-Thor dynamic. Yeah. You know? Like before, they, before they've been villains, they've been like rivals and they've been villains that are, you know, uh, that are fighting against each other, like a superhero and a super villain. But like finally in this film, I feel that they finally got, oh, you know what? They're also brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe they should act like brothers. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they really have that down. Uh, let's, let's do. Let's do get help. Yes. <laughs> we are not doing get help. <laughs> a better idea? Well, no. Then we're doing it. <laughs> like, that's such a brother thing. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing Valkyrie finally make her appearance and then fall because she's drunk off her ass. <laughs> and I told Bella, I'm like, that's, that's your Uncle Randall. She just randled. <laughs> and then Jeff Goldblum showing up to uh, pure imagination. Yes, like, yes, that was unexpected. I was like, "It's it's the Willy Wonka song." Yeah, but in Planet Hulk, Hulk befriends a number of aliens, and they're all also trapped here on this planet getting ready to fight and there's a number of aliens and they're all about to face this creature that's going to kill them all. And so they decide to make a, a pact that aliens have where they are war bound. Yeah. So it's like this really serious pact of, okay, so now we are a group and we will stay with each other until we all die, which will probably be tomorrow when we fight this giant alien creature. So (laughs) now we are a thing. We are war bound, so they, there's a number of them in this group, and two of them are a giant rock guy named Korg and Meek, who is a bug who talks. And I love the fact that Korg and Meek are in uh, Thor Ragnarok, except now Korg is a New Zealand guy. Yeah. And but, Meek they, but they're talk. both from Planet Hulk? Yeah, they're both from Planet Hulk. Yeah. Okay. Except, except Korg is like a serious warrior on his planet and meek is actually a small little bug that talks and is actually quite funny (laughs) so in this they made the rock guy funny and then the bug doesn't talk yeah but i just love korg so much see you later new doug 
<laughs> yes. And then, and then the what we do in shadows reference. Did you catch that? I think I might have missed that one. Yeah. So they're about to fight in the arena. Oh, with this. Yes, three of them. Uh, yes. Can you? No, I, I I just connected it now. Actually, yeah. You know, there's still blood and hair on this weapon, guys. Can you please clean your weapon <laughs> after you use it? And they're trying to pick their weapons. Like, hey, Thor, how about this? A giant wooden fork. Be really good for killing three vampires if they're living in close proximity to each other. Yes. <laughs> uh, like, I squealed at that. Just, Yee! So excited. <laughs> That's awesome. Dad. Yes? The Justice League. Um, the Justice, Justice League, League trailer. Yes. It had come together. That's one of the background songs. By the amazing. Beatles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was um, amazing. Yeah, I'm, it, the, the reviews are s- starting to come out for Justice League, and I'm really excited. Really? Because they're horrible. They are. There's some horrible reviews. I'm really excited. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So excited. I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah. Goodbye. But one of, one of the things that I'm really excited about uh, Thor Ragnarok is that at the end of the movie... Uh, spoiler alert or whatever. Not much of a spoiler alert. Yeah, it, the, the people of Asgard do not have a home, and they're kind of they're 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 there, like going through space looking for a a new home, and that seems to be a setup for something that happens in the comic books. I started reading Thor because. Uh, it, like Ragnarok happens and Asgard is destroyed and everyone dies and uh, Thor manages to come back but now he's got like the powers of Odin he's basically a god so he, he sets about creating a new Asgard and the Asgard that he ends up creating is like this gi- this giant floating castle that's yeah. about that's about um like 500 feet hovering above a small town in New Mexico. Nice. Okay. It's, it's a, it'll save them time traveling. Yeah. And it's so, it's so awesome. Not because of what's happening to Thor. Like I didn't give a shit about Thor, but suddenly there are all of these like gods and as guardian people, uh, who are it, living right next door to a small town, and it's so adorable. Like, like uh, the the one fat guy f- who's Thor's friend is like drunk, riding a horse up and down the street with a weapon, threatening to fight people and kill them. And <laughs> here's like, the, and here's like the small town police. Like, what do we do? Do we stop him? Do we arrest him for uh, DUI? He seems to be drunk on a horse. Like, what do we do? Do we even do we even have? Can we arrest a god? I don't even know if he's a god. I think he's just some drunk guy from Asgard. <laughs> like, what do we do? And there's this one tiny little subplot of just this young college guy who works at the diner, and one day he's walking home, and he happens to see like this beautiful goddess uh, lake nymph creature this beautiful goddess woman who's also walking and they meet and start to like each other and it's so weird because like this woman is a god and here's 19 year old billy yeah you know who has a beat up pickup truck like how are they gonna make that work i can see an entire like comedy based on that like thor yeah just a, living like, yeah, like I could I could see all of that. Like a like a like a normal guy in love with a goddess. No, no, the just the entire plot of like Asgard is back, but now it's right next to this small town in the middle of nowhere. Uh huh. Okay. And less about Thor and Loki and like their adventures, and maybe we'll give them a bad guy to chase. But it's primarily about regular Asgardians 
and the people who live in this small town. <laughs> like, that's the story I want to hear. Yeah. It would be kind of like the, the first Thor movie where Thor's walking around going into the pet shop. I need a horse! <laughs> We don't have horses here. Well, give me an animal big enough for me to ride. Like, basically, that as an entire movie. Because now all of Asgard lives in this small town. Yeah. Yeah. I'd watch the shit out of that. (laughs) No, that, that that does sound fun. Yeah. Anyway, that is all I have for this week's movie. I would have more, but uh, I am just now getting over the worst hangover ever. Yeah, really? Yeah, uh, Natasha was just staying up and like, I'm going to stay up and have a few beers. And I was just like, hey, I I will stay up and have a few beers with you. Next thing you know, it's 3 a.m. and we're like doing iCarly Mad Libs. At some point in time, at around 4 a.m., I ended up falling asleep at the foot of Emerald's bed like an animal. <laughs> you know, like like your dog comes to sleep on the bed with you? Apparently, that was me, and I thought it was my bedroom, and I was confused as to why what Emerald was doing in my bedroom and kept telling her to go to her room. But I was in her room. <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember any of this. She will make sure you never forget this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so don't worry about remembering it. Emerald's got it, <laughs> right? That's an engram. I gave her an engram. Yes. So, so that's all I've got. I would have more, but it, you know, it took a long time for me to be able to lift my head. Yes. <laughs> so. Damn good movie. So, I'll give it a recommend. Yeah, yeah it's a damn good movie. Mm-hmm. And people should watch it. Next week is the last uh, I, it, we're, we're getting near the end of the November palette cleanser. And so I thought that we should uh, uh, tackle one of the biggest, most recent films that I have not been and excited at all to see and 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 i'm in no way excited to talk about it next week but i'm going to anyway okay. next week we're doing fucking we're do we're we're doing tag tag what the fuck is tag oh wait no no what happens after tag there you go it we're doing it oh, okay tag, tag is the prequel that's how you know someone gets to be it <laughs> they play tag I, I keep, keep getting uh, confused. Yeah. And then there's the sequel to it called Hey No Tagbacks. <laughs> so there's three movies. There's Tag, there's It, and then there's Hey No Tagbacks. Cool. So we're doing It next week. Uh, we could definitely to, do that. Yeah, check the cough cough. It's a huge file. Okay. It's It's a movie quality. Nice file, and it's huge, but it's there anyway. Next week, we are doing the new Stephen King film. It next week, we're coming up with nine new and interesting conspiracy theories. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm I'm going to tell you the exciting story of what's been happening to our spoons. Okay, uh, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. It is. It, there's no it, our spoons have been disappearing and and we've recently figured out where they've been going and let me tell you it's not what you expect where have they been going oh oh the last place you would least expect it we have we have we have a mole in our house i i don't mean an actual mole i mean one of the kids is a spy ah okay so next week we're going to be going telling you who the spy that. is Oh, just just wait! I've got an exciting new band name that I've I've got a I've got a good week set up for next week. So next week, uh, conspiracy theories, missing spoons, and Stephen King's new film It. That is next week, and I think next week, I gotta say, it sounds like a pretty 
pretty good episode. But if I'm talking about right now, right here, right now, I think that this has been a damn good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Damn good. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Real good. Damn good. So until next week, mm. I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Do 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 Skeep skeep scat scoot skip ya do a deep a dop a do wow Cut and print Cut and print